So the intersect command that we have in both Camera Raw and Lightroom has been around for a little while now, and it's incredibly useful. But so many of the tutorials about it, mine included, mainly show it being used for selecting sky. And although this works really well, understandably, it can still leave us not really getting why we'd use it. So in this video, I want to show you another practical use for it that isn't on a sky, and also show you how we can use it to make an even better subject selection. So I'm going to use this photograph here, which I hasten to add is just a grab shot. I took this when it was pouring down with rain when we were doing a bit of research for a location that I want to do a photo shoot of my car in. But we're going to use this picture because the back of the car is lit quite nicely. The side of the car here, I need to be a bit brighter. This is going to be a great use for Intersect. Okay, so first of all, let's just do a little bit of editing on this to get it to where we need to increase the brightness on the side of the car. So I'll just go to the crop tool. We'll make this a square crop. I'll go for a one by one. And I might even bring it in just a little bit now. It's just a bit tighter on it there. And something like that will do just there. Okay, next thing I'll do then, I'm going to oh, just get rid of this down here. Let's use that remove tool. And I'll just brush over that area just there. Like so it's a bit distracting that. And click on remove. That'll get rid of it in just a matter of seconds, which is cool. I'll get rid of this area over on the left hand side, give myself some more workspace by pressing P on the keyboard and that gets rid of that. Okay, so first of all then, what I'll do is just give it a bit of coloring. I'm gonna to go to the preset section and in here, if I just close that down, I'll go to my yours section. I've got one in here called Dark and Moody. This is one of my own presets. If you want it, you can get hold of it by just going to my website and just getting my twice monthly newsletter. In there, you've got the presets, raw files to download, video tutorials, subscriber only content, so you can grab it from there. But what I'll do is I'll click on that to apply it. I can also use the amount slider to increase or decrease the overall look. I'll just kind of keep it around about the middle area, something like that. You can see that the blue of the car has gone. We'll fix that in a minute. But just for now, what I think I'll do as well is I'll go to um, the premium section here and we'll go to Adaptive Sky. So I want to make the sky just a little bit better. That's better. So we'll go for something like that. And again, I can use the amount slider to increase or decrease it. Probably around about there is going to be enough for me. But let's now go back to get the color back in the uh, car. That's purely down to the settings that are in that preset. So I'm going to scroll down to the color mixer section here, where we have the color, hue, saturation, and luminance. And it's the saturation I want to be at. And you can see here, look, the blue is reduced, minus 100. So I'm just going to double click on that to set it back to where it is there at zero. So we can start to see some of the color coming back in the car. I can also go to the luminance section here, go onto the blues and start to brighten it. But it's not really having that much of an effect. The blue slider there, we've got the aqua slider. So I do need to actually make a selection of the car to, to actually bring up that brightness because I want to leave everywhere else as it is. So to make the selection, I will go to the masking section. And what I will do is first of all, go to the create a new mask. So we'll go to create new mask and I'm going to use subject here. Now, when I click on it, what you'll notice is you'll see the red overlay, but can you see how it's, it's actually selected the car, but maybe just a little bit more than I want. So there's a little bit of the ground at the back here, a bit underneath just there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use intersect to see if it can improve it. So as I do it, I'm going to go up to here where we've got the three dots next to the mask, this ellipsis here. We've got the option here of intersect mask using, and I'm going to go to the select subject. So I'm actually using that command twice. First of all, to select the car, and now to use it to hopefully get a better subject selection. So when I use this, keep an eye what happens to the actual red overlay, the selection currently around the car. So we go intersect mask using select subject. And I'll press that. And you can see straight away, you see how it lifted up? So it's actually improved it. So that's definitely better than what it was before. Now I can come in and just increase the exposure there on the car. And you'll notice, look, how the exposure is definitely increasing on the car. It's not, I'm liking it how it is around the back but it's this side area here that could do with a, sort of bringing up just a little bit more. So I'm going to work on that in just a second. Before we do, though, 
Let me just have a look at the sky. We use that adaptive preset on the sky. Let's make sure it is only on the sky. I'll first of all come to the masking section here. Let's just rename these masks so we know what they are. This is the one the select in the car itself. So we'll go to the three dots and go rename. And I'm going to call this one car one because I will be making another one in a short while. The one down here is the sky. So it says blue drama. I'll leave it at that. That's what the actual adaptive presets called. But look, if I click on that and then turn on the overlay, you can see what I mean now. Look, can you see how the red overlay is coming down from the sky onto that sort of actual um, area, like the little hills and the, over, the undergrowth and what have you down here on the left hand side. So I need to improve that. It's also missed a little bit out there. Look as well. We can work on that in a minute. But what I will do is while I'm clicking on this blue drama mask here, which is on for the sky, what I'll do is go to the three dots, the ellipsis. This is what's been shown before when you can improve the sky selections using intersect. I'll go to the three dots. We'll go to intersect mask using select sky. And again, keep an eye on some of these red areas here. Certainly this red area. There's even a red area selection look here on the actual gravel area, which shouldn't be there. So intersect mask using select sky. And watch what happens. Bang, takes it off it. Much, much better. So now we know we've got that sorted. So what I want to do then is I want to improve the look, the brightness rather, on the car. So I need to do this. So I've made one initial selection of the car. That's brightened it all up. Now I need to make a selection so that I can just brighten that front part. So this is what I'm going to do. We'll go to the create new mask. We'll go to subject and just like before, it's going to make a selection of the car, but maybe just a little bit more than I wanted. So we'll then go to the three dots and I'll go to intersect mask using select subject. That'll improve it. So now look, I can brighten the car, but that's the same as what we had already. How can I now restrict it so that it's only going to be on the front or the side rather of the car and not really affecting the back? Well, I can go back to this mask, go back to the three dots and use the intersect command yet again. So this time I'm going to go intersect with mask using linear gradient. I'll click on that. And now when I bring the cursor in, you'll see no change at the moment until I press down. When I press down and then drag, you start to see me placing over the red overlay. But can you see how that red overlay, that linear gradient, is only visible within the subject, which is the car. So that intersect command is basically keeping this second mask restricted to where the first mask was placed, which was the subject, the car. So I'm going to drag it so that we go to round about here. And you'll notice the overlay here is dominant, much more deeper red in this area, and it starts to feather off. And we can use that feathering off to blend into the background so that it, or the back of the car rather, so that the brightness of the car and the brightness on the side of the car blend together so it looks kind of seamless. You can click and drag the gradient to increase it more over to the right hand side like so, but I'll probably go just to this kind of rear corner part here. Now that I've got that, I'll come over to the light section and I'll use the exposure command. And look, as I move that exposure, can you see now, look, it's only working on that side of the car. It's not affecting the back of the car, which is exactly what we want. We've now restricted where that mask is going to be. So we'll go for something like that. Big difference already. Loving that. I'm going to work on the color of the blue. Let's give it a bit more impact in a minute. But before we come out of the masking section, let's just do a couple of extra little things. I will, again, rename the mask. So I'll go to the three dots just here. We'll go to rename. And we'll go to car two. That's what I'll put there. And in fact, I'll put a dash and I'll put side. So we know exactly what that mask is doing. All the little things I could do in here, I'll create a new mask. Let's go to a radial gradient and I'll click and drag out a radial gradient like so for the back alloy wheel just there. Place it right over the middle. I can increase the exposure on it. And I'll also increase the shadows so we start to see some of the old disc pads and what have you, uh, or the discs and pads in the back there, like in that one. So we'll call that one rename. We'll call that um, uh, rear one, or just rear, that'll do. And I'll do another one for the front. So we go to radial gradient, click and drag. 
I'll then click in the middle to reposition it like so. Again, just a little bit of exposure and boost the shadow so we start to see a bit more detail coming through just there. Lovely jubbly. Let's just rename that, rename, and we'll say front. All right, that's enough on the masking. But now that we've done that, I can come back to the main edit section here. I'll scroll down to the color and we've got the color mixer because now this is going to do a global effect or global changes on the color within the image. And obviously I want to make the blue a little bit more punchy like it is on my car. So I'll go to the luminance. We can kind of brighten the whole car or darken it like so. So maybe have it like that. Uh, let's have a look here. We've got saturation. I could actually increase the saturation like so. And the great thing is now the brightness of the car is exactly how I want it to be. I could actually come down now to the, uh, in fact, let's go back to the masking. This is what I love about the control we have here. I'll go to the initial uh, car one subject selection just there. And within the controls or uh, section here, I can go to the effects. Let's just do a bit of dehaze. Look at that. Look at the impact that's having on the car there. Bit of clarity. <laughs> really giving it some punch. Loving that. That's looking really cool. I like it. I like it. Now, considering this is a snapshot, this isn't the picture that I want to end up with. This is purely one that I did when it was pouring down with rain, jumped out the car to grab a quick picture with my iPhone so that I kind of remembered where we were when we go back to do the photo shoot. But now that I've done that, very quickly using those intersect commands to first of all, uh, well, to improve the selection of the sky and then to improve the, sub uh, the subject selection on the car. So two great uses there for the intersect. But let me just press the backslash key on my keyboard so that we can see a before and after. So we go before and after, before and after. And just like everything in Lightroom, it is completely non-destructive. So I could come back in here and if I think I need it to be a bit brighter, I can come in and make it just a little bit brighter. Actually, there was one extra little thing, wasn't there? We got the sky just there. When I mentioned about the fact that it was missing a little bit, if I turn that overlay on so we saw it per see it permanently just there, the red overlay is missing in that window. Right, so I'll tell you what we'll do. Now that I'm clicked on that blue drama, the sky, the adaptive sky mask there, I'm gonna click on add and get a brush. And then what I'll do is I'll click and drag to zoom in on that window. And it's just increase the size of it and I'll just brush over with the brush just there, just to say, whoops, gone a bit too far, but you get the idea what I'm doing. Just to include that, in the actual uh, adjustments as well, like so. Tell you what, let's be, let's be a good boy. Let's remove it off that area there. We'll go subtract and we'll go brush. That'll teach me not to rush. And I'll just take it off the windowsill. There we go. Cool. All right, let's go to fit. We'll turn off the overlay. And there we go. Again, let's come out of the masking and we'll press the backslash key to go before and after. You can see it now, look in the window before and after. So I hope that helps in showing how we can use the intersect command and how useful it is. But keep an eye out for those videos coming soon showing the car photo shoot behind the scenes and the editing in which all of the photography and video will only be done using a drone. Well, that's the plan anyway. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video.